Come on, adorn him. Come on, dress him up with the words of your lips. You might not feel like jumping. You might not feel like shouting, but I have a strong praise in my mouth, and I'm just telling him, rather, it's just thank you for keeping me. You are my keeper. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. He likes hearing that. Come on. You are my Redeemer. Let him hear. Let him know. Let him know. Let Abaha seek you. Did he all say? Just let him know. Just, just adorn him right now. It doesn't take much to open your mouth and tell him what he is and what he means. It doesn't take much to tell him, thank you for healing me. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for touching my mind. Thank you. I'm on seeking in your seat. Thank you for last month. Thank you for last week. Thank you for last year. Adorning our Savior. Uh, hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless him. We bless him. God, we bless you on today. There's no God like you. There is no God like you. There is no God, no God like you. Be with us, your people today, God. Be all in the midst of us. God, we thank you for using the praise and the worship team. God, we thank you, God, for using the leaders today. We thank you, God, for using the parishioners today in the activity of the movement of this service. God, we bless you on today. God, don't miss one person in this house, God. Don't miss one person in this house on today. Let your spirit be felt. Let your glory be experienced in the mighty name of Jesus. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, that's, that's it's nothing wrong with that right there. Just that, that stillness, that, that just, I'm adorning you. I'm, uh, I'm just adorning you, Father. I'm just, just telling you all about yourself, telling you how I feel about you, what I know about you. I'm not perfect. I'm not... I'm not everything I need to be. We bless the name of Jesus in the freezer. We bless him. Come on. It's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing wrong with giving him what's due to him. I'm wondering why I'm looking and some people are looking at me. I can't. I can't save you. I don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. I, 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 all I can do is speak on the behalf of God. The Bible said, look towards the hills from whence cometh your help and your help cometh from the Lord. You're just telling him, talk good to him. So many times we, we talk good to everybody else, but when's the last time you just talk good to the father, just the merciful father, no matter the situation that you're in, just, just I'm talking good to you. I'm speaking good to you. I'm speaking words unto you. The power of the Holy Ghost be felt in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, glory be unto God. Glory be unto God. He is the redeemer. I can jump, man. I can run. I can shout. But I'm and, and you know, I, 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 I get it. I can't get too leery if, if people won't move their body to flop and flail. But but I, I'm questionable, man, with people who say they got a relationship with the Lord and they don't know what to do when you say just talk to the father. I don't want to just talk to you when I'm praying because I'm in need of something. I just want to have a conversation with you. I, I don't want anything from you right now. And I want you to know that I just, I love you that much. I just, I just thank you for being who you've been to me. And he's been who he's been to each of us in a diverse manner. And that's why none of us should be closed lip right now. Everybody in this house should be able to just speak to God for a moment from that position and posture of who you know God to be. I don't know what he's been to you i know what he's been to me what has he been to you now tell him that just tell him that tell him that tell him that he deserves that he deserves that 
Orabahasi. He deserves that. And then some. And then some. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, sir. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. Yeah. I don't want to give you a cheap praise, a cheap worship. After you've moved, I'm giving you this through faith. I'm using faith in this one. Just forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my thoughts, my actions, my deeds, Lord. I, my spirit is prostrate before you as I stand upright in your presence. Hey, Tired and weary, but the strength of the Lord is coming to me now. It's coming to you now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. If I could sing, I'd sing that song, Never Let a Day Go By, <laughs> without praising his name. Never let a day go by. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to be. Sometimes we'll be on the top of the mountain. Sometimes we'll be in the middle of the mountain. Sometimes we'll be in the valley. Sometimes when you're in his glory, it doesn't take a lot of your movement because he's moving. He's moving. Glory. You can rest your ankles only if you can. Only if you can. Ah, Lord, we bless you all today. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, we bless you. That's a good place to be when I just get that opportunity to just let him know how I feel about him. Keeping my mind, <laughs> keeping my, my body, keeping just, just his keeping power, putting up with my mess. I don't have a church on that one. Putting up with my foolery. Good gosh. Well, I guess none of you ain't never done nothing, so I'm going to look in the direction of the transparent today. Putting up with my nonsense my not listening when I know I should have listening and still giving me another chance, another opportunity, just one more opportunity. I don't know how many opportunities he's given me. I don't know about you, but I'm thanking him for another chance. I'm thanking him for another opportunity. I thank God he didn't skip over me and say, forget it. I'm tired of this one. I'm going to use somebody else. I'm sick of this one. I'm going to bless somebody else. I'm tired of that one. I'm going to just save somebody else. Thank God for one more chance. That's, that's to them that's transparent, that know I got the Holy Ghost and I'm saved, but this flesh will mess up on me sometime and get me in trouble with the Lord. Thank God for one more chance. One more chance. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, rest your ankles. He deserves, he deserves our, our, our worship, our praise. I enjoyed um, praise and worship from the back. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Thank God for you. I'm going to be uh, in the book of Matthew, and I'm going to be in the book of 1 King today. For Matthew, I'm going to be Matthew chapter 10, and for for uh, the book of Kings, I'm going to be uh, 1 King 18, uh, and we're going to uh, flow from these two directions. Um, God dealing with me, uh, dealing with me in a way, uh, and in between, well, actually last night, and then, uh, and then in the shower, I promised my wife that I wouldn't raise my voice today. I said, I'm not going to raise my voice. And she said, uh-huh, we'll see. So I'm going to see if I can teach without <laughs> shifting something about the excitement. But I want you to hear what thus say of the Lord today. And so many times I think we don't hear him because we're excited or we're numb or we're in a particular position and where we find ourselves, I don't know, whatever we've gotten ourselves into or just come out of. Sometimes within ourselves, it makes it hard for us to tune in. So I bind up every distracting spirit today. I bind up every type of demon that would cause you not to be able to receive and hear. No, to, to hear because I can't force you to receive. 
but I bind up anything that would stop you from hearing what God has to say. So we bind it. Look at somebody and say, we bind it. We bind it. So I'm not thinking about and you're not thinking about what's going on home. You're not thinking about what's going to happen on Monday. All distractions and hindrances are bound up right now. So if I got to put my phone on do not disturb right now because the devil loves texting me in the middle of my breakthrough. Just when I'm about to get what it is that God got from me, all of a sudden that dumb text comes through. So I bind the activity because I need to hear what God is saying to me on today. God gives me something and um, this is a strong word. It's a strong word. And uh, he began to deal with me on yesterday and um, he said these words to me. He said, son, your disapproval is important to me. He said, your disapproval is important to me. Now, I'm going to give you what he says to me. Your disapproval is important to him. Because when God gives a word, if he gives a word, rather it be to a leader, shepherd, prophet, whoever he decides to use, he's given that individual the word first for himself. Then once he gives that word to him for himself, he analyzes it. He or she has to repent first for what God is giving to him. Because you can't minister a word through a vessel in which you actually lack repentance. That would be a stance of hypocrisy. And that's what sends out the seed of confusion. So he tells me, and this comes from uh, dinners on Friday. And uh, we were outside and we were doing a two-part fundraiser for the church. So uh, we were doing dinners and we did them to 12. And then we shifted from 12 to and went outside. And I did a few details and I looked at. Uh, one of my spiritual sons and I said to Auntie, I'm thinking I don't care who pull up we ain't doing another car and he looked up at me and he smiled and said yes sir I was thinking the same thing so he says to me and I look at him and he thinks I'm playing I'm basically serious because the son was beating I don't know what out of us but that wasn't it it was at the point in time when someone pulled up and they pulled up in the parking lot and we're all guilty of it. Someone pulled up in the parking lot and they began to have a conversation with me. And they began to have a conversation with me. And the conversation that was being held with me had to do with something that God already told me I can't do. I hope y'all catch this. So it was a testing. It was a testing that looked like an opportunity. So God then says, uh, God says nothing. Because there's times God will just watch. And I'm going to tell you something. Most of the time, God watches. You don't get God on, on that platform. That's why I said, watch out for these, these, these prophets that are prophesying every single day about something new, about something different, about something to pluck the strings of your heart. Be careful of that. Because when the Lord speaks, heaven speaks with one accord. Heaven is not divided. Heaven is not in a place of where one believes this and one believes that. They flow with unison. That's why Satan was evicted because he went against the flow. So, so God gives me something and someone pulled up and when they pulled up, they pulled up and they said, we need you to be a part of something um, that's coming this season. I said, oh, okay. And um, they said, we're having a certain type of event and we want you and we want your church and we want this. And I'm already knowing, I know that God said they will come for you this season and you can't go. Now, why would God tell me something and that something is happening and now I'm standing at the place of actually just speaking what God has already revealed to me and questioning whether or not this is God. Do you remember in the Bible when God says they were, he, one came and he came and they came to buy him, they came to give him money so that he could speak against something that he did not have the permission to speak against? Do you guys remember that? Do you remember that in the word of God? And God told him, no, God said, no, don't do it. But they came with more riches. They came with more wealth. They came with more to offer. And he goes back to God and asks God again, God, can I go? Is this you? God saying, listen, I told you no. The second, this is the second time. God tells him on the third time to go. People say God changed his mind. No, he didn't. God got tired of repeating himself. So God let him do what his flesh wanted to do. I'm hoping 
y'all. Like some of y'all, I love y'all, but I have let you do what you want to do. I have raised my kids. Preach, man, y'all don't want to talk to me. I have raised my kids. And my kids are up and coming. And when my kids reach that certain plateau of where they 18, they are grown. When they're 21, they're growner. And when they 25, they on their own. Y'all don't want to talk. And I have learned that if I want to live longer, I will not stand in a posture of going back and forth with someone who is an adult that is going to do exactly what they're going to do because they feel that they're okay with doing it. So as a prophet and the leader of this house, that's why I've released some of you from my spirit because it helps me to rest better. Jesus, man. Anybody want some more sleep? You want some more sleep? When, when you release people from you that aren't yielding to the word that God has put in you and you say, God, I turn them over to you. Preach that right there. God, I give them over to you. I don't entertain what they're doing anymore. I don't want to hear about what they're in the middle of anymore. I don't want to know about that because I know the outcome because you already said the outcome when you sent the warning. The warning is always a wrapping. It's, it's almost a gift so the warning comes but the outcome is inside of the warning jesus man y'all i hope you're listening today so 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 when people get to a certain place of where within themselves they are grown let them do what they're going to do because watch this while you're in the middle of interceding you still gotta actually watch out for the darts that are coming at your back and half the time the attacks that are coming at you are based upon the people that you are wasting your time trying to reach that are only entertaining you for your time God, jeez, Lord, have mercy. Prophet, you're saying to quit. I said to let them go. Give them to God because you are not God, Jesus. And because you are not God, you do not have the patience of God, Jesus, Lord. You do not have, y'all want me to say that again? You do not have the patience of God. You have the power of God, but you don't have his patience because if you have the patience of God, some of y'all wouldn't be sitting in here still mad with your cousin and your third cousin and your third uncle and your family. Some of you wouldn't still be sitting in this church mad with me from a sermon I preached two weeks or three weeks ago and you still holding it against me, just shaping around and shopping around to see if I can just find somewhere that's similar to it that I can get away from this. Listen, don't let me hold y'all up. I don't want to hold nobody in bondage. Y'all go, y'all I'll go, I'll talk to you real clearly. If there's somewhere else that you would like to be, please go. I am not holding you up. God does not hold you by handcuffs. But if you're going to be here, I'm going to continue to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me, God. It is, it is my duty. Look at somebody say, it's your duty to... I don't have no man. I don't have. Thank you, sir. It's your duty. And this is now where God is getting me. He says, he says, your disapproval is important to me. And he began to go down the line. So I'm in the parking lot and I'm dealing with the individual. And the first thing I say is, let me check with my admins. Why am I checking for an opening that the Lord has already closed? See, some of you are missing God in this season because you forgot. You forgot when he kept you when the vaccine did not exist. I feel like talking and I'm going to say what I want to say when I want to say it because I am a vessel of God. You forgot how hard you chased his presence when you thought that Benny Smith and they were going to bury your tail underground. You forgot the press. You forgot the fact that you used to chase him with everything because your heart was palpitating. Can I talk, man? Y'all, you forgot the way that you used to chase him. Now it seems like COVID is just a mere cold so I can sneeze it off so there is no danger but God says tell them when you warn them that they never know the outcome that's why most of them always go against the warning oh God see they're thinking that I survived this or I survived that and I survived that so I'm good God got me but they're thinking in the wrong manner the only way you survived it I come to let y'all know something the only way you survive a common cold is the fact that God still allows you to breathe breath in your body. Now, I know you give credit to NyQuil. I know you give credit to Tylenol. I know you give credit to antibiotics, but I am telling you today that if God says it is your time, it is your time. It, it, and the crazy part about it is, is if it's my time, then it's my time. But it's if it's my time and I'm not cooked well, Jesus, how do I get a well done when I'm undercooked? So, so, so I'm sitting in church 
playing games. Lord, talk to me right now. So God's telling me, he's saying, why do you need to check with anyone to see if you have an opening? And I told you not to go. I told you they would send for you and you are not to go. He said, for one, they're not following the same regimen that I gave you. Now, listen, as for you and your house, you have to follow this regimen. And, 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 and I'm going to say what the Lord told me to say because I told lady before I left the house, God said, COVID, where is Mia? Where is she at? Where is Mia? Where is she? Is she here? Is she here? Good. Mia, stand up. Where, where is you? There you are. Stand up. Good. Because you were dead on the money. God told me this morning that COVID will come back to this church. And he said, it's not because the devil desires to test the church. So when you came to me, you said you saw it and the people were mad. I wonder why they mad because they the ones that's bringing it in here. They're the ones that's bringing it in here through their disobedient actions, ma'am. But God gave me a covenant today. He said, I shall cover you if you stay obedient unto me. So I thank you for that warning, ma'am, because he told me just as, and lady just was like, oh, Jesus. I said, babe, don't worry about it because God has to prove now that everybody done got quiet on me. Listen, this church has went through, I mean, every level of, of fortification spiritually and naturally to keep the people of God safe in the house of God but y'all are the ones that keep doing the very opposite of what God says we can and cannot do now I'm not hollering at you I'm not fussing with you but that's your choice and I found something when I found out that I cannot actually Rosalind we begin to realize that we cannot control our kids and and, and you get so much peace from it when you realize I can't control what Rylan gonna do Rylan gonna do what Rylan gonna do y'all don't want to talk to me oh god onyx gonna do what onyx gonna do i ain't got nobody in here maya gonna do what maya gonna do y'all gonna get mad with me kayla gonna do what kayla gonna do jeremiah shy no 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 see now watch this under a certain level i still have lordship over you and see what's happening with the body of christ is the same that's happening in our household the bible says spare the rod spoil the child uh oh now i didn't say to abuse your children and i'm not teaching you to beat and bang on your children because there are some times that you can sit down and you can talk to these kids and you can find out what's malfunctioning in these kids what's actually going wrong with these kids then there's times that you got to pull out a belt and wear their hind part out and let them know that what you're doing is wrong and you know it's wrong see because there's consequences y'all mad with me okay you want me to break it down to you let them murder somebody the judge ain't gonna say i'm gonna slap you on the wrist i'm gonna let you go with this now some people get let go with it especially if they say it's temporarily insanity but they ain't your color and i don't care who get mad with me if you go there and cry temporary insanity they still gonna lock your black tail up and put you in jail for about 30 or 40 years and if i'm lying get up and walk out right now trying to tell you that there are consequences that come with what we're doing and then now we shift to God and God says I have to allow consequences to happen to them that keep playing games with the instructions that I'm giving them now he says now watch the average person is looking at everything that's going on and they're saying well it's just a common it's a common it's a common he said I haven't revealed to you why I've been telling you to do what it is that you're doing I've just been asking you to do it Jesus Lord Moses build the ark what build the ark why God build the ark why God build the ark Moses go back why God go back why God he don't want it go back go back and tell him just what I said Abraham go in the battle why God they doing it go in the battle go in the battle Jesus yes Lord if this could come could pass from me I wish it could pass from me no you know not to ask me because it still has to happen y'all still not talking to me in this church on today there are some consequences that are on the other side of choices that we keep making fun of so the choices that God has given us are the choices that we keep playing with say why shout why because the Lord said we got too many peacekeepers in this church mm -hmm. and he looked at me and he says this to me in my spirit he said son you have become a peacekeeper he said, because when you were standing at that car, you had the right then to actually reprimand that pastor and tell him, Lord have mercy, what my spirit was saying and what he shouldn't be doing. But you chose to walk away and say, let me check my books. That was your opportunity to say, God told me that I shouldn't be doing this. And the same prophet that you seek after for words for everything else is the prophet that's telling you, you shouldn't be having that in your church because you're only doing it because of what Fauci and the saying but I'm telling you what the holy G-H-O-S-T is saying and rather or not 
you actually believe it or not, the outcome still remains the same. Y'all not catching that. See, rather you resist it, rather you let it go, it still remains the same. And I hear Anamansiah, death is in this house and we don't even see it. God show me. He said somebody is going to lose their life in that church, my son. This is the only way that it gets their attention because they're like wayward kids. Kids who basically do what they want to do until the situation gets severe. Oh, God, calm your spirit, calm your spirit. So he says, your disapproval, it matters to me. He said, because when you disapprove, it shows that heaven disapproves. Mm, let's shift. He said, first, you got to tell them, watch this, the reason for a leader. Now, look, either you want a leader or you don't want a leader. Let's go here. Either you want a leader or you don't want a leader. I had the opportunity to go to my first college graduation on yesterday and to, to salute my sister off and to be able to just look at her and to just brought tears to my eyes as I, as I thought about my mama and my father. My father was real stern on, on education. He was just, you, you going to get your work done. And just to know that you were actually in college, he was, he was Bill Cosby without the money and without playing with the women. Y'all don't want me to prophesy to you in here. Don't play with me. He was he 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 had that mindset that he was all about the education and you doing well and you doing what you were supposed to do. Oh God! So when I sat there and I watched the collegiate and and I watched all of them that were giving the speeches and I watched all the teachers, there had to be one chosen to lead the ceremony. Jesus Lord! But I wonder how many people fussed over the opportunity to lead mm -hmm. because of the same degree that they felt that they had as the person that had the podium. God, Lord, there's a reason for leadership. Say, prove it, boy. Say, 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 say prove it, boy. Why would God call Moses when there's 400,000 men that are actually working and could have set themselves free because they lacked a leader? Jesus, Lord. Why in the world would God call a leader? Why would God call David to a place of where there's over a million men, but they could not come together unless there was a David. They could not come together unless there was a Moses. They could not come together together unless there was a Saul. That was Old Testament, buddy. That was Old Testament. Shift to the New Testament. You have Apostle Paul that led them. You had Apostle Peter that led them. You had Jesus Christ who was their leader. See, our problem in this church is you don't want a leader in church, but you'll follow a leader in the corporate world. My God. God, Jesus. So I don't want you leading me from the pulpit, but if that man that makes eight figures comes down out of his office and leads you to wealth, then you run your happy behind. You'll do anything. You'll almost turn tricks. You don't want me to prophesy in here. Some of y'all have laid down your Holy Ghost and put it on the shelf and left that bad boy there, and that's why you don't even know that you are in a bad place with God. People have brought your Holy Ghost. You're talking about you won't sell your birthright for a bowl of beans you might want to go back and not sell your Holy Ghost for not for an amount of money. It ain't your birthright that matters right now. It is the Holy Ghost that you need. Oh, it's quiet right now. I'm trying to tell you you need somebody that's thorough, that will lead you, that will tell you when you're wrong and also let you know good job when you are right. But most of the time you don't always get out of boy, out of boy because everybody shouldn't need to know or hear good job just because you did what you were supposed to do anyway. Lord, how many people told Jesus good job when he was up on the cross? Good job, Jesus. You're hanging for me. Y'all don't want me to prophesy. Who told Apostle Paul? Good job, Paul. They done hit you with them rocks and you got up and shook it off. Good job. You shouldn't need to hear good job. You should know this is your good job is well done. And well done is coming soon if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Oh my God. See, y'all want everybody in it when you in it, but, but you can't be in it. Watch this when somebody else is. That's why God identifies demons around you at time. You got to be able to sniff a demon out. You got to be able to tell when there are people that are in operation around you that are operating as if they have holy attributes but they are actually hiding demonic intentions. I feel God right now. And those of y'all that are beginning to draw together with each other with bad intentions, oh my God, you are in a bad place this season. I'm telling you, it is nothing I can do to save you. I can't even speak and say, Lord, hold your hand. I can't even say, God, stay this. I can't even. We can't keep
keep getting the same warning over and over again. God saying, come into me, come into me. God saying, don't do this, don't do this. God saying, don't do that. This whole world, God mapped it out today when I was in the bathroom. He said, son, this whole world is Sodom and Gomorrah. The whole world is Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, that's why that disease won't leave. He said, that's why famine is overtaken. This whole, and they think that all the money they have in the bank, all the investments that they have made, they think that's going to stop the palmer and the canker worm. They think they can buy me, son. They think that they can buy me. They think that they can actually give money and stop my hand. When I blow, the earth listens. When I speak, winds and waves stop. I am sick You don't even understand who it is. That's why it's good to go and read the Bible, but go back to Genesis and go all the way up into the prophets. Mm -hmm. Stop running to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then thinking that you got the power of the Holy Ghost, but you don't have the fear of God that was established in the Old Testament. You want to work ministry? Preach right now. Then go back and study the God who didn't put up with our mess. That way, watch this. When I serve him, I serve you under the covenant of the mantle of Jesus Christ and his blood, but I serve you with the fear of Abraham. I serve you with the trembling of David. I serve you with the trembling of Ezekiel. I serve you with the trembling trembling of Jeremiah. Everybody want to prophesy, but they not coming from the old school flow. Prophets were birthed in the Old Testament. These are new age uh, prophets that you are seeing right now. New age prophets. Them old prophets didn't come up to you and tell you, a boy, good job. They did not tell you you were in the right place. They came to you. When they came to you, you knew it was trouble. But we have become peacemakers because it gets lonely being anointed. Anybody know that? Anybody in here? Anybody will admit right now, watch this, that you have laid down your anointing to a certain degree because it gets lonely doing God's work. Ain't nobody put your mask up and don't take it down no more. Listen, has anybody in here ever, and I mean this ever, been in a place of realizing that the anointing that is on my life and that anointing that is on my life actually comes with a whole nother degree. It doesn't give me wealth. It doesn't give me fortune. It doesn't give me fame. It gives me havoc. It gives me uncontrolled attacks. It gives me some things that I have to go through that the average person does not have to go through. Oh, y'all looking at me strange. That's why the average person would rather be a church goer. Hmm. The average person would rather stop at, at going to church and paying their tithes. But if you are sitting on an anointing that God has given you to shift earth and you think that 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 you're doing is actually buying your way into the kingdom of God, I come to tell you today that time is winding up. Jesus, Lord. Lord, I feel you right now. Life is short. Do you not understand this? You see people dropping like flies. I don't even know what happened on one. All I know is I was driving and I was looking. I just gave the story on the phone. Hope was in the car. I said, I said, I don't really speed like crazy on Route 1 anymore. And she was asking, she's like, well, you know, I said, I don't speed like crazy on Route 1 because I was in a dream and in a dream I was in this truck. So I got enough common sense. If God's showing me actually in the dream things of right now, he's actually warning me. You ain't catching that. When he's showing me a dream and it's things that, I, that I'm not familiar with, he's showing me future. If, he's, if it's a dream and then in a dream I see some things and it's, it's attached to old things, he's talking about my past. Y'all not going to talk to me right now. So I saw me in the black truck. I saw a lady in the black truck. And I mean, I was balling. I was at least doing 90 to 100. I mean, I was killing it in the truck and all of a sudden something happened and all of a sudden it happened and the truck just flipped maybe about 15 times immediately when the truck flipped I saw two souls go straight up just like that and I was telling Hope the story I said so I don't speak and as soon as we did that we came to a scourging halt everything stopped and I looked up the road I said man it's an accident up there and we didn't know it was really bad until we saw the helicopter now you know when they fly the helicopter in and they coming to pick you up then that means it's something severe it's something that now watch this who would ever thought I don't know the results of whoever it was on that road. Maybe God was actually telling me, listen, on this road lies a spirit, a strong man of death. God, Lord, on this path right here, you don't see principalities. You don't know why I'm telling you not to be with this set of people. You don't know why I'm telling you not to go to these places. You don't know why I'm telling you not to connect with these people. You can't see principalities. You barely can see a demon. So I know you can't see a principality because a principality demands that you go higher and level 
levels that you are not able to commit to because to get to those realms you got to do a whole bunch of fasting and praying and I'm not talking about this play play praying and I'm not talking about emulating somebody else's tongues and acting like that individual to think that you can actually gain access into places that you are not qualified for in this season God. so God then tells me he then tells me and I look at hope I said man that's bad and I'm on the phone with, with lady I said it's real bad I said it's crazy but it was like a warning warning I have learned to listen to God in warnings I have mm -mm. I don't play with the yellow lights I actually come to a full stop at yellow lights now Tawana I don't even because because watch this if I am going to submit to God holistically then I should submit to, to everything that's in earth that God has set in place to actually keep me in a position that God can continue to work with me oh boy it's quiet right now it's quiet right now I can't bind anything unless it's against God right now so regulations that are set in place to keep me can't be bound mm -mm. so oh y'all didn't catch that I don't care if I speak against it I don't care if I say it's for me it's not for me but I'm telling you that God is saying that death is in this church I'm telling you what I said I'm telling you and I will not take it back it is not severe unto us because we play games with what it is that God gives us and we play so many games that it doesn't get real until it knocks on our door so he comes and he says your disapproval is very important he says your disapproval is important because of this he says okay son he said listen he gives me so, so I'm gonna slow down so he says your disapproval is, is important he said one because I called you to be a leader I chose you to be a leader so even those who don't follow you're still a leader and you're not a leader to everybody you're a leader to them that follow Jesus Lord so, so, so now you take the rings and realms off of, of, of us black folk that want to be a leader to a nation Lord Jesus we're never good with leading what God says we need to lead we're never good with doing things in our own ministry it ain't enough people enough people don't support me people don't back me we're never good with doing what it is that God called us to do God had to break me from that mess trying to be a prophet to the nation trying to be a rapper to the nation i'm not called to the nation oh god lord that doesn't even make sense why would he call me to the nation and he's got so many other people that he's using watch this under different principality attacks huh you're called to the region you're called to because you have the strength to contend with the principality over your region but shifting regions means that you have to connect with the person i anointed in that region with your anointing to watch this keep the attack of the principality off your back while you're there y'all not catching this you not see we're shifting to regions but we connect them with people with no have no power mm -hmm. we're connecting with people that don't even have a holy ghost we're connecting with people that won't even stay in churches that are filled with the power of god they're running they're running they're scattered all over the place but they want to minister they're ministering all over the place but they're not submitted to leadership so leaders can't tell them nothing but they can tell y'all something that i'm off right now god told me that i'm not to be in a church this season oh but you can be all over them other places huh you can go on all them other directions huh but it's the church that you actually come running to when all them places have actually exploded upon you isn't it it is because we play so many games with the words of god that the time is coming when we're gonna have to answer for what it is we're playing with with god so he gives me this he said your disapproval it matters to me he said it's very important and he said stop playing with your disapproval he said stop playing with it he said you had an opportunity to tell that man you could have told that man i cannot come because i told you not to go outside of this church and minister anywhere unless it's an outdoor event because you're not called to the churches this season you're called to the sinners uh, Lord. now the way that I knew that it was a churchy thing is the first thing they asked me was do you have a choir preach now talk right now what you laughing for you the one running all over the place and everybody else is quiet don't play with me today I'm telling you the prophet he gave me the boldness I'm not playing with y'all no more I'm telling you the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth stop playing with God I'm telling you that he's saying the first thing they said is do you have a choir I said God told us to dismantle the choir dismantle Dismantle the choir. Dismantle the choir. Dismantle the choir in the midst of the pandemic. Y'all not even catching that. You did you even catch that? That the attack that came, that the one mm, I can't even say it on the mic. But we would have been in some bad trouble, and I'm not even gonna say nothing else there. Because we were about to make the wrong decision and connect with something that would have over 
turn this church and then some more. Now you stop and think about it and you'll catch it on tomorrow. So I said, he said, dismantle it. Well, do you have a praise and worship team? Yeah, but y'all don't want them. You don't want the praise and worship there because we don't do, we don't do that stuff y'all do. We don't let sissies lead us. We don't, we, we, we don't let, y'all don't want me to talk. We don't let lesbians get up in the pulpit and play games with us. We don't let folk come in and play around with, and we don't participate in that type of foolishness either. Stop clapping your hand because some of y'all, you ain't said nothing to the people that you know is guilty of the mess that they in. I told you, I'm going to be like my daddy this season. Y'all going to be mad with me. I don't care. As long as God say, I'm pleased with you. You ain't said nothing to them about what it is they in. You ain't said nothing to them that they in the midst of. You ain't introduced them to the true delivering power of the Holy Ghost because the delivering power of the Holy Ghost is capable of doing all things but failing. It can change a transvestite into a man. It can change. Y'all don't want to talk to me. It can change your mental, not to mental instability, but it can set your mind free. It can take that demon, have some deliverance services. We playing games with the devil, and I'm telling you, it's going to overtake us real soon. But I have decided I'm going to walk in the full authority of the power of the Holy Ghost because I can't make it without it, man. I cannot defeat the world without it. I can't make it in this world playing games I've got to have the true mantle of God because even when I'm playing with God the devil's still playing against me so even when watch this I got one foot in God and one foot out of God I got two gods now that's fighting against me and the one God can defeat both of us and I'm working for a God that does not have the strength to defeat the God that I really should be serving so I'm serving the devil but the devil has been defeated by God and I'm finding myself doing things for the enemy in this season and calling it ministry God said you have become a peace maker my son he said I did not call you to bring peace oh God Matthew 10 28 says don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body they cannot touch your soul fear only God who can destroy both soul and body in hell what is the price of two sparrows one copper coin but not a single sparrow on your I mean not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without the father knowing it Jesus and the very hairs on your head are all numbered <laughs> every hair every follicle that's in your head is numbered watch this so don't be afraid you are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows you ain't even catching this and that mm, uh, God, stay right there Rob okay so slow so split this the other week God said come out of investments God said it just the other week I said I told you I said God said don't, don't mess with the investment he said some other stuff I ain't telling y'all what he said on camera because the only reason some of y'all watch is actually to get those but you reject everything else so if you want everything you have come get everything all at one time we, we, we don't door dash you're gonna have to come in the house of God so he said he said listen he said don't do it right out of nowhere out the blue Elijah walks in the Exxon down the street he walks in the Exxon down the street and he said God I mean he gets in the truck ladies on the phone he said dad he said, Dad, that man was in there, man. He was cutting up. He was cussing. He was going crazy. He was just, he was fussing and stuff. I said, what for? What, what was going on? But he said he was mad because he checked something, stock something, and he just lost $4,000. I said, <laughs> I said, hold on, you talking, this is what, that, that, that ain't even, that was Thursday when he said that. The, oh, Jesus. I shy at, that's why he get ready to break some of y'all that think you got it all together because of your money. He gonna show you what it is to be without money. That's why some of you who don't have money, I mean, without money, some of you who don't have money, you ought to praise God right now. Guess why? You can't go no lower than this. Mm -mm. Because watch this, where you are right now, honestly, you've learned how to survive without having to sell your soul for man so I'm, I can't go no lower than this anything he give me is a blessing so it won't bother my mind it won't really bother me because God has to bless he blesses my day to day my day to day affairs this is what God said this is not what prophet said this is what the Lord said he said they have become very comfortable in their mammon but they are not listening nor are they even paying attention 
to what it is. See, that's how the devil will work. The devil will make you serve him, but he'll make you put a blindfold on while you're serving him. So what he'll do is he'll say, I'm leading you. Come on, come on, come on. Come this way, come this way. Uh -uh. But I can't show you where I'm taking you because I'm about to bless you. So he hides the path of where he... And then, then when you get there, boom, guess what? You in some mess that you can't get your behind out of. Repent, says the Lord. Repent, says the Lord. I know you're not liking me today, but I'm going to finish this sermon and I'm going to go home and I'm going to love that sofa and I'm going to do what I need to do and get me some more rest. I am telling you on today that the Lord has had enough and we have to stop playing the games that we have been playing most of our life with God. You would think that after he saved us the last time, after he brought us out of the stroke, after he brought us out of COVID, after he brought you out of the heart attack, after he let you survive addiction, after he let you uh, survive divorce, after he let you survive the mental attack, after he let you uh, survive the car accident, after he let you survive all that you survived, how come it only took almost a year and now you're right back to your same thinking? No, God create in me a new mind this season. I know you wanted me to say a new heart, but create in me a new mind so that the memory of my past will not suppress my deliverance because I need to stay delivered in this season. Lady, I know I made a promise, but if you give me seven more seconds to just modulate, I need to protect my deliverance with everything that's in me because God, with you, I can do anything but fail. But without you, I'm nothing. I can't make it. I can't. I ain't even trying to achieve things in the earth. I'm not even trying to make a name for myself. But without you, I know that I'm in trouble. My family's in trouble. The church is in trouble. Everything that I'm connected to is in trouble. The city is in trouble. The town I live in is in trouble. So God, whatever you do, don't remove your hand. Somebody ought to say, I repent. So, so we go deeper to the sparrow. We go deeper. I know I was talking a story, but I want to stay on, on place. Stand with the sparrow, the sparrow. Everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, I will also acknowledge before my father in heaven. He said, you're, 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 you're becoming a peacekeeper. But everyone who denies me here on earth, see, there's more than one way to deny the father. And I think we think denying the father is saying he don't exist. You can deny the father in your actions. This world is in danger. It is in trouble. Why they can't see it, I don't know. Why you can't see it, I'm scratching my head. I don't know how many people keep telling me the dream. Stand up, Stacy, Mia, two other people. Stand up. Uh, every dream of devastation that they see, she said, everything outside was, it was crazy. It was like the world was coming to an end. She said, but when I walked in the church, I looked and everybody was surrounding you and y'all weren't paying it any attention. She said it was just like peace in there. Sit down for a second, minister. This little one comes to me and says, it was like they were shooting in the parking lot. And she said, but when you came in, it was like y'all didn't even realize. And it was like, see, I, God is trying to tell a lot of people, rest your ankles, baby. I've had so many people to tell me, it, it stops though when you come through the door. It's, it's, <laughs> they, they think that it's just, and stop treating this altar like a God. God need me to tell y'all that. Because some of you have turned this altar into a God. He is God. You want, me, you want me to prove it? You don't have to rub the altar to feel God. You don't really have to put nothing in the altar to get a response from God. He is omnipotent. Woo! God. Yes, the altar is greatly anointed. But we are pulling it now as if it's a shrine as if it's a as if it's a specific place that I can go to and I can just go right there and I can and it's almost like my sins are hidden so I go to the altar for the wrong things and I'm going to them with dirty hands and a filthy heart asking them for a financial outcome or something else as if that can't judge me he is omnipotent do you understand that the power of God is in this house and when we come together each of you that have the Holy Ghost we intensify the fire and power of God in this house. 
say prove it because when one chase a thousand two ten thousand so each person that got the Holy Ghost in this house let's say that the fire in this house is burning at this degree now watch this one person stand up just one person come on don't look around just one look 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 I jumped up another person stand up look how I jumped up another person stand up look how I jumped up now how is that working because each of you are fire carriers you are fire starters you have the ability of the power of the Holy Ghost everywhere in the Bible where they said they saw the Holy Ghost they said they saw smoke so smoke was representation of the presence of God somebody else stand up we through the roof right now and when we all get together and get with one accord that's why I don't play no games with y'all that y'all can only praise him when you want to praise him but you can't praise him with the rest of the church there are y'all don't want to talk to me right now y'all want to jump when you want to jump but you can't jump when everybody else jump when we all get together with one sound with one accord then came from heaven the sound likened unto a mighty rushing wind and it shook the foundation of the whole house we got too many of our own personal agendas in the house but he chose a leader and I can't help that it was me. I didn't even want it to be me. I wasn't overzealous about it being me. Honestly, didn't want the job. Anybody who know me, they'll tell you, he wanted to rap. That's all he did. You found him, he was on a corner rapping. I got old footage. Cambridge, the ball court. Anywhere I could set up a speaker and a microphone, I go and rap. People will get saved. We were in DC projects rapping. Y'all ain't got no ministry, man. Y'all got no, y'all waiting for a platform. Some of y'all said God is calling y'all ministry. The world is your platform. Ask about me. Ask about where I've been. Ask, ask. He's been there. The worst types of situations still crying out God. Booth Street when Booth Street was really raw. Still pitching a tent. Still talking the name of Jesus Christ. We want to do Jesus now from Skype. We want to do Jesus because we're peacekeepers. If I go out there and I say lesbians, they might do something to me. I don't want to go out there because all of them got guns. Well, you don't get a gun. Bible said in Nehemiah they was on the wall and at one point in time they had to go get a sword and they had to keep them they had to keep their weapon to work with so they had to work with a shovel but keep the sword in the other hand what is you fearing for we filled with the Holy Ghost but only got boldness to cuss each other out <laughs> this is funny like we filled with the Holy Ghost but we only got boldness to tell them that we control about themselves but God said, no, you've become peacekeepers. And he says, he says, read this. So he says, you are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrow. Do you understand? Tell them the church have become branders, but not of me, of themselves. He said the church has become branders. They're they're out to make names for themselves. That's why you see the church in the state that it's in. That's why you see and most of your churches now back here is the name of the church real big. Possibly a picture of the pastor and his wife. What do I need my picture? Back here as a distraction for. And you see me in person. Say why? Branding. We're turning the church into corporate America. And that is when Jesus beat them out the temple. The church is a brand. Ministries, a brand. Some of you have become a brand. But he's not the brand. <laughs> See, you know, maybe because Jesus just ain't popping good enough. I need a remix to Jesus. But by himself, he saved the whole world. By his name, every demon trembles. By his name alone, your body is healed. 
but it's not enough because we're into branding. It's about us. It's become about us. It's become about us. That's why, that's why there's so many people that run, run, run. I'm so sick of hearing people. All they ever say is, I got to get away from this place that has nothing to offer. So where are you going? Tell me where you're going. You're going there. Okay. So when you get there, what are you going to do? Because you're, you're, you're de- if you're not speaking to LGBTQ here, I know you're not going to. And you're going to LGBTQ headquarters. That when you get there, what are you going to do? Blend in. But call it ministry. We're blending in. The church is blending in. We're blended. We're branded and blended. And don't even realize, watch this trying to be like them still ain't giving us fruitful success it's not giving it because God won't allow it it's not giving us any type of success so he says he said everyone who acknowledges me publicly on earth I will also acknowledge them before my father in heaven I hate to tell you on that day I'm going I'm going to think that God's going to look towards Jesus do you know him do you know her yeah, I, her name's in my book on my desk. <laughs> they received you? Yeah, they covered. But he's saying, if you, if you don't acknowledge my father here, even in the, in the word of God, I don't know if y'all know, your name can be in the book and it can be erased. Say, prove it. Revelation says, if you take one word from it, I'll blot your name out of that book. If you add one word to it, I'll blot your name out of that book. What's blot your name? You ever use easy erase and, and that white stuff you, you put? He, he, he basically saying, I'm going to cross your name out. Your name can be in that book and your name can be taken from that book. But one thing's for sure, you ain't getting in unless your name is in that book. And then there's a whole list in Revelations, in Matthew, in Ezekiel. So many books of the Bible, Ephesians, whole list of things that will keep you from getting into that place. I ain't come to scare you. I come to tell you the truth today and I come to go home. But everyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my father in heaven. Don't imagine that I came to bring peace. Who said that? Who just said that? Don't imagine that I came to bring peace. Jesus, Jesus said it. Who in here is a Christian? Who or are you Christian? You know I mean? Who's saved? Who filled with the Holy Ghost? Oh boy. Hey, watch this. Don't imagine that I came to bring peace to the earth. Who filled with the Holy Ghost? Who saved? Your master, not me. Your master is telling them, don't even put it in your head that I came to this earth to create peace. Ha! I know Moses and them prayed for someone to save them. Oh, here it comes. I know you've been praying for the Messiah, but you've been praying for the Messiah for the wrong reason. You've been wanting me to come and fix earth. No, I will come and fix you while you're in earth so that you can come to a place that don't need to be fixed. To bring peace. I didn't come to bring peace, but the Bible said, Blessed are the peacekeepers. <laughs> but God didn't hold on. He said, Okay, so stay there so they don't know what it is. Watch this. God said, True peace doesn't come until something is first disturbed. <laughs> but false peace is the very opposite. Now I'm gonna go back to the scripture. True peace doesn't come until something has been disturbed. Uh But false peace is the direct opposite. So God's trying to tell you, watch this, when you ignore something that is not right and don't deal with it, Jesus Lord, that's temporary peace. Uh, You think that that is peace, but I'm telling you that's a false sense of peace. Good God Almighty. Because until you have pointed out what it is that is 
in the position that is going against my will, you have not introduced it to the true peace of God. I'm not giving you peace in earth. That's why I said it would get worse. That's why I said what? That COVID was going to stay here. That's why I said, and I'm not saying I said, I'm saying he said. He's telling you you're in the last days. And the last days don't get better. They get worse. And you would think that if I am in the last days that I'm recognizing that man, listen, God could take me today. It might even not be by COVID. It could just be like, he just be like, Troop, you gone. It's time for you to go. And I want to be ready. They say, I pray we all be ready. I really pray we all be ready. But I don't know if we all going to be ready. According to Matthew, the Bible says that you'll be in the vineyard. Good Lord, this is really going to be an eye opener. You ready? Can everybody stand up, please? All right, you ready for this? Everybody stand up. Now watch this. I want everybody to look to your left. Mm -hmm. You can stay there, ma'am. You can stay in your seat. Everybody look to your left. Everybody look to your left. You know what your left is? You know what your left is? You look to your left? Okay. You ready? Okay. So the person that's to your left, tap them on their shoulder. Uh-huh. There you go. You tap them. No, you stay on your side. Y'all stay on your side because you can't cross the barrier. You ready? You tap them on their shoulder. Everybody who got tapped, sit down. I want to know how you got tapped because she wasn't supposed to cross the barrier. So let her sit down. No. Oh, gee, forget it. Everybody got tapped. According to the word of God, in the workers field, they would be working. Half would be taken. The other half would be left. Look at them that's sitting down. They either got left or they either went. Here's the question. What do you do <laughs> when what you sat next to is gone and you left to deal with the outcome that has been preached to you for years Bible said death will hide its, its face in those days if, if that's a fact your best is filthy rags to me so even us that stand up 10% of us might not make it in Rest your ankles for one second and I'm going to say something. You can't never get to a place to where I am peaceful. Now watch this. This is, this, is, this is where it comes strong. You ready? That's why God, I believe God calls. Okay. Y'all ever looked at his leaders? Has anybody? Moses committed murder. He killed a soldier that was actually abusing his people. David slept with Bathsheba. Moses. No, I'm sorry. Moses killed a soldier. Yeah, I did it right. Shifting. You keep shifting to it. When you shift more and more and more, Saul, he killed many Christians, many others. Why would God call them to lead? Can anybody answer that question? Why didn't he call what was already there? Why would God need Saul and Peter and them to exist? Why would God need Moses? And you had the Sanhedrin that was already secretly formed inside the slave camps when they were in Egypt. They all had heart. Every last one of them had heart. They stood up to the best of them. David stood up to what everybody else sat down to. Moses stood up to what everybody else took demands from. Saul had one incursion. All of a sudden, he, he was full. So God know he can't be buffeted. He done been up against the best of them. Everybody can't lead. Everybody want to lead, but everybody can't lead. Because you've got leaders now that are peacekeepers. Peacekeepers according to the word of God. And I'm almost done. It says this. It says, watch this. I didn't come to bring peace on earth. I came not to bring peace. I, brought, I come to bring a sword. I've come to set a man against his father. A daughter against her mother. A daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. I hope y'all catch this right now. 
your enemies, your enemies, your enemies, your enemies will be that of your own household. So then what is God saying to us? He's saying you're trying to keep peace with them that you're closest to. But he said, I came to uproot that in which you won't deal with. I ain't say it, your master said it, so you can't get mad with me. He said, I come to turn them against each other because the enemies shall be that of their own household. They will be in the same household. Some will put up with things that they know that I said is not to be done, but they will keep quiet to keep peace. But they'll go to somebody else's household and point out the mess that they in. I didn't say it. Here, you, you, you want me to turn it around to you? It's right there. I didn't say it. He said it. He said, I come to turn them against each other. He said, if you love, this is going to hurt even more. This takes from that, when they put this degree and they said, they said it's family first, then God, then everything else. Here you go. I never was lying. Here's the word of God. If you love your father or your mother, more than you love me, I ain't say it, Jesus said it. You are not worthy of being mine. Who? If, oh, don't get mad with me. Or if you love, uh-uh, I want everybody to pay attention to this one right here. If you love your son or your daughter more than me, you are not worthy of being mine. Who? I know what he said, but that don't apply to you. Baby, I, I got to keep peace. I know what they're saying, but I got to keep peace. God said you're not worthy of being his. I didn't say it. He said it. You know they shacking up in your house and you ain't said nothing. God says you're not worthy of being his. Why y'all quiet? I'm not saying this. This is saying this. This is Jesus Christ who is saying this. He says if they are in your own household and you see the error and you don't say anything about the error. But what I do, they paying my bills. Trust God. That's my daughter. She might leave my son. Let him go. God said, if you love them more than you, I didn't say it. Who said it? Who said it? You sure? He said, you are not worthy of being mine. If you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life, see, that's where, that's where I feel they're getting ready to see something real catastrophic soon. And, and I, I believe that people are truly lying to God's people. This, if you cling to your life, you will lose. Those of you who are still being very careful, carrying yourself, not trusting, and a lot of people, when it comes to this COVID, stay in that realm. Stay in that realm. Those that are moving loosely, let them do them. But make no alliances with them. I'm dead set. Make no I'm telling you, make no alliances with them. Those who have went against the grain, the flow of, make no, don't even give them a ride. Don't even let them in your house. You'll see why soon. We're the people of ain't nothing happened yet. That's what we are. We're the people of ain't nothing happened yet. So he says, if you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. Now watch this. The greatest battle right now is we're safe because we have something in us that says that we good now. Clinging to life. So life matters when you said, God said, open the churches, I'm scared to die. Why were pastors scared to die? So the pastors that were taken, were they good or bad? Because they were preached against, actually, in churches to say they were reckless. Were they? Or did they stand in the midst of adversity and trust God? He did not say that death would not touch us. Because that would go against his word. When did he ever tell us to hide in our cave and hide our light under a basket? Where in the Bible do you see he said hide? 
Nowhere in the Bible do it say he said hide. It's a bunch of hypocrites in church. It's a lot of hypocrites in church. It's a lot of hypocrites in church. But he says, if you cling to that life, you'll lose it. He said, but if you give up your life for me, you will find it. He said, anyone who receives you, they receive me. He brought me some, what's the right word? He brought me some peace. He says, anyone who receives you, they receive me. And anyone who receives me, receives my father who sent me. Then he says, if you receive a prophet as one who speaks for God, you will be given the same reward as that prophet. So while you're running around here trying to buy a reward, God said, all I need you to do is receive who I'm using and you're going to get the same reward that I'm giving him. So is that the problem that particular leaders are truly blessed because they're giving up everything that they possibly can to serve and please God? And me, I'm the type who I'm very concerned about the people who are actually under me and around me because I want them just as blessed. So I find myself going out of the way to try to get them to where I am. Could God be saying you're trying to bring them to where you are, but they are not eligible for the reward that I gave you because they're really not receiving you. And when they don't receive you, they don't receive me. And when they don't receive me, they don't receive my father. So he's telling you, I'm disconnecting everything they have from heaven. So when they go home and they say, God, help me. Jesus, Lord. God, I know he does not hear them because the whole chain has been disconnected. He said, and this is Jesus. So to them that say he doesn't have prophets in this time because it's New Testament. Why would Jesus be telling you right now that when a prophet comes and speaks in my name, if you receive him, you get his reward. And if you receive righteous people because of their righteousness, you will be given a reward like theirs. Then he gives me this. I'm done. Those of you who find yourself having to speak, say particular things, and within yourself, you just basically be like, it's hard. And I'm not so much on the friendy type. I really don't care about that. Like, I'm, I'm grown. Grown folk don't care about friends. Unless, unless you've grown, but you're not mature. Like, grown folk don't, I don't, I'm pretty much okay with just, you know, being able to see people, but not actually have to have, you know, a connection with them. Because I think that's what calls us to sell out our anointing. Because our heart is connected to friends. <laughs> and I don't want to lose a friend, you know, so I won't tell that friend the truth. So I keep peace so I can keep friendship. But what, what happens with the relationship that I have with God? First King 18 says, so Obadiah went to tell Ahab that Elijah had come. And Ahab went out to meet Elijah. When Ahab saw him, he exclaimed, so is it really you, you troublemaker of Israel? I have made no trouble for Israel, said Elijah. You and your family are the troublemakers, for you have refused to obey the commands of the Lord and have worshipped the images of Baal instead. This man had to be a lonely guy because he's called in that time to deal with people who God always is trying to give another chance. Everywhere Elijah went, basically, he was deemed as an enemy. I'm okay with it. I couldn't, at first I had to, I'm not okay though with some of you because some of you come into alliance with people who are against the very people who are fighting for you guys. And me, I'm, I'm a street guy, so I'm from the streets. You never trust a person, and if anybody wasn't from the streets and you want to be able to sniff out somebody that you can't trust, 
you never trust a person that hang with your enemies. I mean, I got anybody in here from the streets. If you're from the streets, raise your hands. That, okay, okay, so would you ever trust somebody that you know is secretly hanging with the very people that's against what you stand for? You wouldn't do it, would you? Who else wouldn't do it? Put your hand down, somebody. You call me. I suppose you. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm Robert Best Senior today. I'm not even Robert Best Junior. Because some of you know people can't stand my guts. Can't stand the ministry. Can't stand what's being spoken. And you're in alliance with them. And for the life of me, I'm like, how are they making connections with these people? I know why you told me to stay away from them. Can't they see it? I'm like, they can't see that? He said, look how long it took you to see it. He said, but I gave you to them to warn them about what you've already seen. But they have a choice. You listen, you don't listen. It's up to you. I cannot. That's something that I think many preachers have died before their time. Many parents have died before their time. Many people who have who have been chosen to help. They've died before their time because they've been trying to make people get it. Make people listen. No, nah, no. Listen, we all got a choice. We have a choice to serve them and you got to serve them wholeheartedly. You can't serve them part time. You serve God part-time, he basically said he spew you out of his mouth. Like, the choices that we have to make in this season for the Lord to continue to keep us, I keep telling y'all, stop chasing wealth. Like, we keep saying we're not, but we are. Stop stop chasing success. Chase ministry and stop stop calling success ministry. Because true ministry isn't successful. In earth's eyes, true ministry, man, you have to go in places that most people will not go. You have to deal with people that most people will not deal with. And true ministry, like, you know, you know what's going on, Amber? This is what's going on. Come here, ma'am. True ministry, you know what we've done? We've taken, stand right there, because that's where we are. You know why? Because we've taken the contact from ministry. So everything is about sending ministry. Sending You see, sending, I don't want to come down from and go to the crack house. But I'll do this and the personifying is supposed to set everybody free. It don't work like that. Jesus got off the boat, went into the most rugged places. He contacted people. He, we, we, everything is a... Some of us are going to go to hell behind social media. Social media is not ministry. I know, have a seat. I know that it looks like a major platform and a highway. It's not ministry. It, anybody who puts the true word of God on your page, the true word of God, how much support do you get? Anybody? Do you get a whole lot of support? Anybody ever stood against a particular thing and didn't get any support at all? If that's you, raise your hand. Have you ever scrolled down your page and seen someone play with what it is that you actually personify and then all the support comes in? If you've seen that, raise your hand. Can I tell you what it is? God taught me a long time ago. I used to wonder, I'd be in the church And when I was in the church, I'd wonder when certain preachers would come, we would have people in the church. And when we had the people in the church, we would come. The people would be people wouldn't move for months in the service. Wouldn't move at all. Whole church be on fire. Church be lit on fire, Chris. It be lit up. That person never would move. Miss Ruth, they would not move. One person come to the church every time. That person would run around the church, would run up to the front and shout. It'd be two or three of them. I'd be like, man, something, this is, this is crazy. And God then told me, I am going to make you keen to them who are operating in the flesh. He said, they don't respond to you because you operate in the spirit. They respond to them because they move their flesh. 
And most people in church respond to fleshly movement. That's why pastors are building the most amazing sounding praise and worship team. Half of them ain't saved. They can sing their high part off, but they ain't saved. I wouldn't support you, Ashley. I wouldn't support you, Amber. I wouldn't support you to go on any American Idol or anything like that. First and foremost, the name alone speaks against the commandment of God. I know I ain't going to get a whole bunch of claps. I really don't care. But y'all do. <laughs> Great job. Keep doing it. How do we do that? How do we preach against God? There should be no other God before. How, how do I accept her and and half the year she's singing R&B. And then she comes and she can lead you into worship with no repentance. How do we do that? See, we peacekeepers. I ain't going to say nothing because it's this person's son or this person's cousin. But let you sin. Guess what? Everything going to come against you. You know why I support it? Because it might be an open door for me. If I support it, they might open a door for me. The Bible said now unto him that is able to open a door that no man can open and close a door that no man can close. These doors that you think are being opened in earth are that just of that. Those doors right there, you can kick them down. But the doors that God has before you, I wouldn't support you. And y'all can blow. I've had you in the studio. I know your capabilities. And some of you look at them and you ain't even moved by them, but you moved by these that go on stages and sing Stevie Wonder and everybody else's song. I don't care if you like me, I'm telling you, it's all sin. If I go out here and I make a song with Dr. Dre and I holler about I'm doing it all for the love of Jesus Christ, if that man didn't get saved on that track, I did it for the love of money. It don't take a rocket scientist to figure some of this stuff out. Some of this stuff we say we're doing in the name of ministry, we're doing it for the love of money. That's all that it is. It don't have nothing to do with ministry. We don't care nothing about no souls. I'm looking for that bag. If I get that bag, then I'm on the right track. That's why the Bible said the love of money is the root to all evil. It didn't say you didn't have to have it, but when you fall in love with it, you're going to get in trouble. And it's got power over you when you can do certain things and get certain things and be able to act with certain ways. That's when it takes power over you. Don't let money make you. You make money, but don't let it make you. Don't let it overtake you. It, it, it might be good to keep a couple of your old outfits from way back in the day in your closet. Even if you can't fit them, the faded ones that you had to wear. You come to church on Sundays, you only had maybe about three outfits. Can't tell us nothing now. We got about 15 good outfits. Some of us 30 or 40. Some of us got so many clothes, we could throw them away at the end of the month. You should have kept some of that old stuff. Because in that old stuff, that's when you had your press. Mike should have held on to that old vehicle that you had that broke down on you all the time. Why won't you sell it? I just want to keep it in my yard so that when I walk out of the house that God blessed me with, I can look to the right and look at that thing that I used to have to. That keeps me humble. That, see, I ain't got a church. I don't, I don't have a church right there. No, no, no. Everything is upgrade, 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 upgrade. Beyonce said upgrade. The Bible didn't say upgrade. That's why some of you just are never, you're never, you're never happy. You're never happy. I got to have new. I got to have new. I got to have new. You don't need him crying about gas. You had a small car. You opted up for the big tank. I hope you run out of gas every 10 miles. You just get mad with me. You had a car and you could have put 20 some dollars in it and you wonder why God said not to change. Now you're sitting up mad and you got to put $60 in it. I, I'm not giving you gas money, that's for sure. We quiet man off. We the one keep upgrading. We keep upgrading. We keep upgrading. We ain't satisfied. We're not satisfied. It's never enough. It's never enough. As we stand to our feet, it's never enough. And that's why, you know what? That's why false prophets can always fool us. Say why. Because we upgrade ourselves and call it blessings. Oh, God. I, it's 30 seconds. We up, that's what he said. Where is it? Where is that at? He said, didn't he say that? Ah, oh, he said it. Where did he put that at? 
Okay, there it is. As you're standing. Okay, I missed, I missed because I want to make sure I gave you everything. So as you're standing, I'm giving you this because these were the words of God and I don't want you to leave here without the prophecies of God. So he said, there is a set of people who have superseded conviction through the crowds of people they are drawn to. So they are no longer convicted based upon the crowds and the conversations of the people that they're connected to now. So they don't feel conviction for doing what God is saying not to do. Because if I am attached to people who don't believe in it anyway, they won't rebuke me. See, some people have left you alone, not because you're a bad person, but because you're always chastising them. Haven't you ever noticed, and you should never let your child, you ain't never noticed when your child will all of a sudden call somebody else mom or call somebody else dad? You ought to slap them right in their mouth. He said, yo, that ain't your mammy. Don't play with me. Who, 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 what do they do in this house? Oh, that's mom so-and-so. No, it's not. Because the only reason you're doing a mom so-and-so right now is because you're mad with your real mama. And all the way you call somebody else daddy. I wish you would call somebody else daddy. My daddy would tell you, I'll wrap you in a sheet and send you to him. In a sheet, yeah, because you ain't taking no clothes out of here because you ain't buying none of them. Send you right out of the house naked. I'll at least give you a sheet. Watch that because that's what happens. People run from correction. And what they do is, I adopt the new mom. I adopt the new father. That's in church. This is my, that's why you meet people that's got 30 spiritual mothers and 50 spiritual fathers. Well, good God Almighty, you was passed around a whole bunch. He says, a double-minded person, you better catch it. A double-minded person feels they can please both sides of the spectrum. He said, give that because you know that spectrum is, 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 is one illusion of the colors, but he said it also has a second meaning. Spectrum is used to classify something or suggest that it is to be classified in terms of its position on a scale between two extremes or opposite points. So he says a double-minded person is a person who feels that they can please both sides of the spectrum. So I have one person here and I've got the church here. But this person's my friend and they feel this way. But the church is saying I have to go this way. So I'm actually double-minded because I'm trying to please both sides. When you tell people the truth, most of the time they either autocorrect or they walk away from you. When they stay around and they still themselves, you didn't tell them the truth. Because if you tell them the truth and they stay themselves and you stay with them, you're still a part of what they're doing. I'm just reading Bible and I'm going to give it to you the way he said it. He said the different voices we choose, and this is the Holy Ghost, the different voices we choose to entertain may not be submitted to the true teaching of God. And this is what's causing the disobedience of those who are amongst us and you. That will not fully submit, they or that will not fully submit to the instructions of God. So he said there's many different voices that are in the equ equation and we are not to compete with it. Let them hear the voice they want to hear and let it be. He said this to me, you will not reach a small percentage of them that are connected with you in this season. For they have placed you on a convenient muting system due to spirits of pride, arrogance, deceit, and the pursuit of false illusions they call blessings or ministries. Can I say that again? Can I apply it to you. You will not reach a small percentage of the people that you are connected to this season. You will not reach a small percentage of the people that you are connected to this season. And those who, call your, those who you call your sons and daughters or brothers and sisters in Christ, Allow their disapproval to blend in. All right, say that again. If those who you call sons and daughters in Christ allow their disapproval to blend in in order to keep peace, they themselves become guilty of my word and the blood is upon them. Say it again. If those you call your sons and daughters those you call your brothers and sisters in Christ, allow their disapproval to blend in in order to keep peace. Is anybody guilty of that? You tell the truth. Anybody guilty of that? 
I ain't going to lie. I'm not even going to lie to you. You prophet? Yep. I don't know why sometimes, like, you know you should speak up, but you don't speak up. Yes. Okay. So he says the blood is required. Watch this. Not just of you, me. The Bible gives us a fix for anything that we've ever done that can put us back in right standings. Repent and do your first works over. So it's basically, God, forgive me. Go back to doing your first works. It doesn't even mean you start over. I think that's what scares everybody. If a person quits for a year tithing, the Bible just said, repent, do your first works over. Did you catch that? Get back to doing what you first started doing. That reconnects you to me. If, if you slip, you do what it, repent, do your first works over. What were your first words? Okay, I was doing this for God, this for God, this for God. Do that over again. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. So, um, he said, you have too many peacekeepers in your ministry, son. And he said, many will see what I, him, have been speaking to be true, while a great portion will be fooled in this season to come. And he said, that season to come is this summer time we are embarking upon. Gave you everything God gave me. I say, I say this to the body of Christ. I do, I, I do, <laughs> I do realize it's easy to preach the commands of God versus following them. I understand that there is a challenge. Do we all agree with that? You see what I'm saying? Like it's easy to tell another person what to do versus to do any of you can tell a person how to do something so well that it's mind blowing but for the life of you the same thing that you tell people to do you find yourself having it will you be transparent right there like you you can you can set somebody free out your mouth and in the same advice that you give you find yourself actually having to fight against it but guess what your failure would discredit 10 20, 30, 100, 1,000, if not many more of them that you've reached through your encouragement. So if you are fighting for your deliverance, think back on how many people God has used you to reach. If nothing else matters to you, I know souls matter to you. I know it. I know it. Does, does souls matter to anybody in here? So if souls really matter, because I believe everybody in this church loves God. I believe that it would have to be because he wouldn't send chastening if he didn't love you and you didn't love him. We just get sidetracked. So I believe we, we, we love God. But when you put us in situations in where we've befriended people for 20 and 30 years or we're connected to people and we and we really love them, man, we love them, but their ways aren't right. This is when we got to raise our hand and say, God, I need your boldness. I need your boldness. Because I don't want to upset you. And I, I, I don't definitely want to be under your curse. I definitely don't. I definitely don't even. I don't want to be against you. My hand's with yours. Don't worry. Because I, I, I asked him. I asked him. I, I walked right in. I, I, I don't know who I said it to. They were here. I said, I'm praying that the Lord give me the power in this season to say what I can preach right to the person's face while they're in it. You see that? You see that? You, did you catch that? Because so many times we walk off and we know what needs to be said. We know what needs to be done. But most of the time we leave it on God to take care of for us. But he put it on you because I invested in you. I gave you the Holy Ghost. I gave you my spirit. And I know it's hard because you're in a world and most of the world that you're in is unsaved. Ah, oh, God said that this world is Sodom and Gomorrah. He said the world. He said it's Sodom and Gomorrah. And you don't even understand why, why your stand is so important. Some of you are in cities. <laughs> or forget a city. Let's just say the, 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 the development you live in. Mom used to say, mom used to stay in the hood. Now, 
Shut up. She was in the hood. Mama was in the hood. We would have to go over there on her, like, you good, baby? You walk up. She was in the hood hood. She's like, I ain't stunning these people out here. She said, God showed me he put an angel on my door. Put an angel on her door. She told, she said, he's still there. She would say, he's still there. She would go in there. She would go in there. Man, she was sitting there. She was like, oh, they all of them speak to me. They, look, she said they nicknamed her. She said, don't nobody bother mom best. See, sometimes we fight being in the hood, but you don't even understand that some of you are the result to the hood. I know what it is. I know none of us want to stay in places where they're stealing your gas and stealing. They can do that in the suburbs. Y'all don't want to talk to me. So in the hood, they break in your car. In the suburbs, they wait to see if you leave it open. In the hood, they take your change. In the suburbs, they take your change and your chargers. Same, same crime, different place. But in the hood, she basically had a stand, a stand that changed, that changed people, that changed people. We're running from what needs to be changed. We running from it. We running from what needs to be changed. We running from, but then where we go, we're trying to change what God ain't send us to. This season, you can't afford, I, I'm not lying to you. I saw death in this church. He wouldn't show me the face. I saw death. And he said, they won't get it until I saw death. He also told me to give you these instructions for those that had their children and different things. And they had their, I, I love all of y'all, but I'm going to keep God's people safe that are following him. He said, those that have kids and their kids are in all types of things. Are there in a lot of things without their mask? Don't let your kids fellowship with them. I know you might feel like the church is splitting. It's not. It's, it's one church. It's one set of commandments. Same with the people of God, man. You have to cover yourself behind that demon. That they, you ain't never seen nothing like this. That you can't even say the name or they'll take it off of social media. Have you ever seen anything like that? Like you couldn't, they tell you you got freedom of speech. And if you even say anything close to cold, false facts. And you can't see. Why are you hearing about hepatitis and monkeypox and... Why do you want to keep shooting me up with stuff? Why all of a sudden you're spending all this money in antidotes? Jesus is the answer for this world today. Upon him, the Bible said there is no other. Jesus is the way. I'm not anti-vaccine because I'm not anti-medicine. I don't like pain. So when they put me in there for COVID, I was praying and they would shoot me up. I was more doped up than a dope fiend. They had me so high in that joker, I don't know when I came down. Came down, I was good. But y'all ready for something? Every medicine in this earth has a side effect. They got medicines that now actually help with the, the cure of cancer. But then they said it can shut down your liver and your lungs. But it, it'll extend your life. Well, wait a minute. It's going to extend my life, but it's going to shut down my liver and my lungs too. So I'm going to be here, but I'm going to be fighting to breathe. Y'all see what we vested in? To some medicines, I believe they're good. Medic I believe that. But I also believe in medicines of the earth. But I ain't going to get into that. I truly believe that you better listen to God because the mess that is out here right now is bigger than COVID. And I, t and I don't know why I brought it right back to that. None of us want to bury our kids. I told you, you don't want to bury your kids. I buried my mama. That was hard. You tell them to bury one of my kids, I'll lose it. You got too much going on but what we gonna do they told us ours had to come to school did what they did that that woman back there went and did private school at home we can't afford nothing that we need to do but we can afford everything we ain't supposed to have she said i ain't gonna send them back i'm going private school with it you're doing pro yeah i'm gonna do private school home and they accredit them in high school my son still keep telling me he passing more than he ever passed when he was in there 
And he loved basketball. That boy, man, he crossed him up. He loved him, man. He loved it. He, I looked at him again. I said, you, you, you good in here? He said, yeah, I don't want to go back to school. I said, you don't? He said, no, nah, I don't want to go back to school. He said, I'm good. I would think he would be getting there now because he get ready to go in 11th grade and doing good. He's doing well. He, oh, Elijah is growing up. I mean, he's doing well. He's doing well. I know y'all call it Google. Google ain't telling him that much or he's smarter than y'all think it is. I think he just grew up. You know, sometimes kids, y'all just dumb because you're young. You want me to talk to you? You're just dumb because you're young. Want me to say, prove it, prophet. Because when you grow up to be my age, you'll master numbers because it's about the money. In school math, you don't want to do it. I failed math 20 times. <laughs> but you can't mess with my numbers, can you, T? <laughs> you can't mess with my numbers. I talk behind you, behind my back. No, that's 12. That's 42. No, that's $1,632. Y'all short. You short $4. Huh? It is not short. Yes, it is. Go back and count it. Oh. You, we learn what we want to learn. So you're dumb because you're young. So if you got grown-ups in here, you're dumb because you're acting young. You know that prophet just said something that time. You're dumb because you're acting young. That's, li listen, can, and I'm done. These, these children, my, my real mothers, that know how to raise a child. Raise a child, had nothing, but you raise your kids, and you know how to raise a child. Stand up for a second. Everybody sit down for a second. Every true mother, I want the older, not the younger ones right now, the older mothers that raised a child, we're going to say you raised a child in the, in the 70s and the 80s era. If you raised a child in that era, can you stand up? Uh-oh. Yeah, 70s and 80s. There, there you go. That's a real mother. See that? She had to pull. That's a real mother right there. Now, you ready for something? You look at all these young mothers. Now, now I even give some of these not, not I, 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 I go for the 90s mothers. If you was raising the 90s, no, no, I ain't. I'm, I'm going to stick with these right here. Because cause, cause you got a special breed here. And I said something. Your value is needed greatly this season. Your offense is needed greatly this season. I was on the phone with the head um, usher, with, with Elder Harmon, and we were talking. I said, Elder Harmon, some of these young mothers... You all, you, 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 you older mothers need to pull them to the side and tell them how to raise their kids. You need to tell them that, you know, you need to tell them how you raise your kids. You need to tell them how to survive off of this. But at the same time, you need to tell them how you messed up. And, and if they keep doing what they're doing, then their child is going to be this, 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 and this. But they need y'all. They need your story, Rosalind. They need your story. You understand me, Landy? And, and it may seem like you're aggravating them, but they need your story. They need your story. They need to know that they can make it with, with little to nothing. They need to know what leftovers truly were. This new generation, this new breed of mothers now, they, 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 they're, they're taught and learned by YouTube and Google, not their kids themselves. How do you raise a kid with stinking feet? Okay, all right. All right. Here you go. Here's 12 pairs of socks. I'm going to get you a pack of socks a week. Why? Because I read if you keep new socks on, your feet won't stink. Teach them how to wash their funky feet. And how to wash their funky tail. And how to wash their funky armpits. Of you mothers, how many can, can spot a fast tail young girl? Raise your hand. You can, you can spot. Ha! You see that? Y'all look at them. Some of you younger mothers, you ought to look at them and if you think that your child is doing some craziness. Go to one of them and say, how do you spot the, uh, the fastness in your child? They're standing right there for you. But you know what we'll do? We'll walk right by them. Because it's better not to hear because I don't want to know. And when I don't know, I don't have to deal with it until it's time. They need y'all. I was telling her, I said, I said they need classes in this church to teach to teach the young people, your kids, the worst thing you can ever do is go into Walmart and see somebody. With, it's, it's, not, it's nothing wrong with having a whole bunch of kids. But when your kids done ran everybody off of aisle 10, 12, and 13, and they running that joker like, baby, kids, something not right. I be saluting Renisha. She got boys, man. She got one girl boys. But you can tell. You can tell. Oh, you can tell. They might get away with some stuff in here. 
and I know your mama. <laughs> you can tell she don't put up with a lot. That's the them, them, them mothers. Stacy, I was over her house. I was cleaning the car. I was just cleaning the car one day. I was cleaning the house, cleaning the car, boy. One of her, her nephews came. <laughs> nephews come out. Normally, when the boy, you know, the boy in trouble, they scared of the dad. So, you know, I'm out, I'm out cleaning the car, and I'm doing something buffing the car. <laughs> that boy came, and she said, I ain't going to say what it was. She, she, I was like, oh, boy, you ever been in the middle of something? Like, I'm going to back up, but I'm going to keep my ear open. <laughs> <laughs> so he stood there. He stood with me for a while. I said, good Lord, boy. I don't know. What your dad going to do by the time? He said, in our culture, you're scared of the woman. <laughs> I said, good God. And he, I mean, the fear of God was in him. He was like, he did what she told her. I was like, she must don't play. So I don't know what you be doing, but I don't want no parts of it. <laughs> but you got to teach them. You got to teach. Y'all can't. Young folks, stand up. You can't have everything you want. You can't have everything. Hope, sit down. <laughs> Young folks, stand. <laughs> Young, f come get your sister-in-law. Young folk, yeah, you kids, forget that, cause then there's some of y'all gonna stand up. Kids, you can't have everything you want. Your parents can bring you some good food home, and you don't do your work. Do what's asked of you. Don't try to be like nobody else but you. I promise you, look at profit. The kids that are cool at your age are the kids that are hooked on drugs when you become something. I prom you look, I promise you, the kids that have everything and you look at them and they cool, they can hang out, they can do what they want. When you get my age or even 30, 30, 40 ish, they the ones that are stranded. They out there. They fighting for their lives. You done locked down a corporate job. You made something of yourself. Look, don't try to be. And for the love of Jesus Christ, put sex on the back burner. Way, 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 way on the back burner. If any of y'all are struggling with that thing that you look at with your eyes, Parents, I need them to have a pass because they got to tell you so you can help them before they experiment in it. And when a child have a child, guess who's going to raise the child? You. And I ain't raising no more kids. I ain't raising no more kids. That, that, listen, talk to your children. Talk to your children. Be hard on them. At the same time, love them. You can't get away with everything. You can't give them everything. And for the love of the Lord, stop trying to be their best friend. Be their mother. Fathers be their fathers. That's all I need to say to you. And you should expect butt whoopings all the way up to 17. Shush, you'd be 19 in my house. Try me. I'm going to pull the belt out. You would rather have the belt than the fist, the hands. I love y'all. Tell your parents you love them. Go find your parents. Tell them you love them. Tell them you appreciate them. Go tell them. Go tell them. Yeah. See, most people don't do that till Mother's Day. Ah. Yeah. Hope, get up and hug that girl with these sideways hugs. She your twin. She doing good for herself. There you go. Tell her, tell her, twin. Tell her you appreciate her. There you go, Tamara. Go back there and hug your mama. That's, that's what I'm talking about. The Lord going to bless him. Man, he going to bless him. Y'all ain't even paid no attention. He did exactly what the Lord told him to do last week. Y'all ain't even catch that. He is Rosalind's son, but the Lord said treat Landis as your mother as well for a season. He got up and did it. Lord, bless him this week. What a prophet's reward. Thank you, sir. Bless him this week. This week. There you go. Yeah, hug your parents. That's, ain't nothing wrong with that. I miss mine. I love them, but, you know, they did enough for us, Wani, while they was here. They, they held us down. Now we hold their name down and we do... Uh-oh, where they... 
Oh, I thought, <laughs> I thought it was Amber. I was going to say, her mom here? I got to say, Ashley Amber. <laughs> Time to come in because I ain't going to laugh. <clears throat> we thank the Lord for all of you. If it's anyone who needs prayer, um, if it, I don't like singing like nobody. If anybody needs prayer, raise your hand if you need prayer. Um, in, the, in the house of the Lord today. You need prayer. All right. You ain't even got to come up. If you want to come up, you can come up. If you don't want to come up, you don't have to come up. I could pray from here. I thank the Lord. Hey, y'all, we're going to do an old school prayer. You ready for this? Point your hands towards them. I used to be in a church and watch the Holy Ghost fall. And if you needed prayer... Lay hands on yourself. One hand pointed at one hand on you. Those are pointing, gonna pray with me, right? So we should feel the power of the Holy Ghost in about 15 seconds. God, we thank and praise you for every individual that's in this house. And Lord, a specific set of people said they need you for a particular reason. Lord, with everything you've done today and with every word you release today, God, they stand in right standings before you for what it is they have need of. Lord, I am only one portion of the kingdom of God. Lord, I speak right now. Release, fall upon them for what it is they have before you. God, we speak right now that the enemy be bound. We tie the enemy down. We break the shoulders of every imp and every demon that resides in hell and on this earth. God, we thank you for victory coming to them at the altar. We thank you for victory hitting them in their seats. God, you made me a promise, God, as I prophesied at these seats on the day of prayer, God, that even if they didn't come to the altar, God, you would do it right in their seats. So I thank you now, God, for you keeping your word as I keep my word unto you and God we declare and decree in this very moment God that whatever it is they have before you it is so God it is already done God it is already manifested God not just in the spirit but it is in their body it is in their hand it is in their mind God it is in their person God we thank and praise you God for warning us we thank and praise you God for doing what you do best which is love us God send strength to these people God strengthen their bodies God touch every element every ape aching ailment in their body God God we thank and praise you God now in the mighty name of Jesus for dealing and touching little Jewel's body God thank you for touching her send the wind into that house in the mighty name of Jesus Lord clear out her chest congestion in Jesus name God God we thank and praise you God for testimony shall arise out of this congregation Lord of the victories that you have brought forth Satan you are defeated you are defeated you are defeated you are defeated you and all your hosts we defeat you, we bind you, we tie you down. In the mighty name of Jesus, we decree it so in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus name. Top of her head the tips of her toes tips of her toes I hear you Usher thank you Deja I think you know your spiritual father in the small of her belly touch her now touch her now We render the devil powerless. Show them who you are, God, because I know who you are. With no effort from an earthly vessel, <laughs> but with the weight of glory that heaven holds. Let the power of God do what it does best. In Jesus Christ's holy name. Jesus Father My gosh Here that I love you Did it did it man see did you see 
Yeah. Hey, Jesus, 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 Father. Ibanda ya sata na na bo horo bo koso kota na na manzi aya ta na na bo horo bo hosa ta ya na na riosa. Glory be unto God. Yes, yes. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Ye keta na mo hosa ta ba ba si kiti riosi. Hey, hey, Ashley, go get behind um, Adrian for me. Refresh and revive, Lord. Refresh and revive. Let the glory of heaven rest upon her now. Go shaya ta ta ma shiki di okoro kosiki. Ah, she's carrying a lot, Lord, but she gives the burdens to you. Once more, God, she places them at your feet. Itada bohoro baka siki di ya siki di 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 ya satana na na almost. Ah, hear you, Lord, itada baha sing. How much more must I take? He kata na man si she. Masha, Isha tata bo horobo kosi kide di asanda na na bo horobo koso koto mansi. Take care of her, God. Iya na mansi ke. Take care of your daughter. Hashi anda na na bo horobo koso. Masi kide di o kora bakasa. Yeah, mansi o soto lo mansi kide di asiki. O tana na 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 mansi karo koso so. Iya pasa tana na bo horobo kasi. He sat at the did 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 the bossy. I am on set at the bossy. Did did I see? If anybody came here today and you just said, "Father, I need a touch," you should stand to your feet and just raise your hands. God, just touch me. Just touch me. We don't have enough ushers, but if you feel a weight, just you'll have to go to your seat. He ta na man seek ya. I just see the Lord moving, and I'm gonna let Him get the glory. God touch your, and it's so strange because I saw it just like like women. God touch first the women in this house. Nope, I take my hand down because I want the Lord to get the glory. God let the weight and the glory of heaven rest upon each of them now, Lord from the top of their shoulders all the way down to their kneecaps. God, shall they feel the glory of heaven. God, whatever they need you to touch, now you shall do. You shall do. You shall do. You have to receive. There it is. Yep, I surrender. I surrender, destroying the yoke. Ah, Ushers, if you pay close attention, if they look weebly, wobbly, just try to help in any way you can. They did your so called Atabahashata. Little sissy, I need you to surrender today. God's going to do something in you today. Because I saw you stand, so you just surrender to him today. Surrender to him today. Surrender to him. Let him do it. Leona, reach your hands all the way up. God's going to touch you. He's going to touch you. Submit, 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 submit. Let him do it. I'm not touching you because I want him to get the glory. I want you to go home and brag on Jesus. I want you to go home and brag on God. Let him do it. Let him do it. Just keep telling him I receive it. Just I receive it. Your hand in her back, elder. Your hand, trust me. Your hand in her back. Come on, this is you and God. This is not me. Whatever it is, 
It is so. It is so. I am touching and agreeing with what you have before God, with what it is you're asking God to touch. I am God's prophet. That one thing I know for a fact. I touch and agree with you now. So that means I am touching and agreeing with your faith. Receive it. Receive him. Receive him. I'm going to use you in your friend's life too. You will bring them to the church. I will deliver the daughter and I will deliver the mother, says God. I will destroy the yoke. The, the, the yoke of hurt, pain, and unforgiveness. I will use you. Receive, 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 receive. I can't touch you. There he is. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm unsay. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I will. He taught no more horror about Kasiki to the Oso. Hands real high. Ashley, God's going to do something special for you today as well. He taught no more horror about Kasiki. God, give it to her just as that shawl rest upon her shoulders. God, rest your glory on her shoulders now. God, rest your glory on her shoulders now. And God said, I'm supposed to call for a release to you. God, send a release now. Send a release now. Now, send a release. Now, I hear you, Holy Ghost. He said, New job, new job, new job, new job, new job, new job, new job. Benefits through the door. More than enough. I heard your prayer. Rest in me, Shatana Namansaya. Rest in me, She Okora Bahasi Kididia Sunday Asiki, O Robahasi, and me, and me, and me, Etedidida the Bohora Bahasi. Glory be unto God. Glory be unto God, Abanse. Glory be unto God, Abashaya. I stopped doing the convincing, you know. Etamansi Kididia, O Hora Bahasi Katana Bohora Bokosi. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, Lord. Mm. Yes. Yes. Yes, God. Yes, Father. Hope you have to try with everything in you to reverse your eating habits. You've got to try now. You have to fight. You got to fight. The enemy would love to put sickness in your body. You have to try. You have to try. And you have to try hard. You have to try hard. Somebody missed their blessing today. They didn't, didn't come and had a great blessing for them. But the Lord told me to give it to someone else. He sure did. Lord, touch lady as she's watching as well. God, let the glory of God rest in the living room, bedroom, wherever she is. God, she desired to be in your house. Let the glory, the glory, the weight that the women felt of the glory of God rest in that house now. Revive her, rejuvenate her in Jesus' name, God. I thank you for touching her. I come against high blood pressure in that house too, Lord. I rebuke it and I call it to an end. Lord, you healed her body a long time ago. And God, we know you as a healer. And as long as we walk upright, God, you uphold those healings. And God, I thank you for reestablishing the covenant of healing against high blood pressure in that house. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lady Bess is not sick. She stayed in because we asked you guys that if your kids are, you know, showing any type of cold signs or anything like that, that even if it's not COVID, could look like COVID to stay in. So she stayed in with the baby. The baby doesn't have COVID. 
But, you know, we wanted to make sure that we keep your kids safe as well because Jewel be all over the church. So we don't just throw uh, commands and demands out for you. We follow them as well. <clears throat> thank you, Jesus. God, I thank you. <laughs> I hear you. This, this is, I will. Do I have a towel in the back? I'm giving away all of them, aren't I? Huh? Towel, one of my towels, one of the, one of the towels in the back. If it's, uh, I'm supposed to give it to you. Yep. The Lord tells me to tell you, when you get back home, you're going to see a change when you get back home. A change. I'm supposed to send it with her. You call, it's going to be a change. I told somebody a while, God told, let's stop that. Somebody to stick. Is there anybody in here as well that needs a change in the atmosphere of your home or what's going on in your house? Is there anybody in here? Stand up. Just stand up. But I'm supposed to send you home. I don't send them a lot with a towel. And I'm supposed to send a towel home. A towel. I was in a, I was in a uh, revival in New Jersey. I think Zach and Ashley will remember. We were in, uh, I don't forgot the name of that Jersey. Where did we used to go all the time in Jersey? Yeah. Say it again. Ha was it? Was it Hamilton? Huh? We was all over the place. But it was the one where we were dealing with the witch. And she was rolling around. And the Lord set her whole family free. And God said to take, you have your house key, y'all, that you need a change. Now listen, I can say this. God can change a lot of things. He can change a lot of things, but he can't change what you already have the power to change. Does that make sense? So if you're saying God changed something that I don't have the power to change, it will apply. If you're saying God changed something that I have the power to change, but I don't want to deal with, it won't apply. Because we learn by fixing particular situations that we ourselves have started. So it was a season, and the Lord would tell them, stick the key in the door, seven days. When they open it, shout what in the house? Remember the revival? What they shout when they walk through? Change. I got so many testimonies from what God did in them people's houses. I get phone calls from Georgia, believe it or not, from revivals years ago. I wonder at times in our own house why, but the Lord tell me to put that into perspective. Sometimes they're asking me to change what I've given them the power to change for themselves, for themselves. Where your key, your house key, put it on the altar. Put it on the altar. Now, God said much prayer should be going on in our homes too as well. Much prayer should be going on in our homes. Much prayer should be going on in our homes. I hear you. Much prayer. Lord, I'm going to give them the instructions that you gave the same people that walk before your presence when they stick these keys in their home door for the next seven days. As they open the door and walk through the threshold, they shall speak change in the atmosphere. Seven days, Father. And on the eighth day, you shall answer their request. Lord, this is according to the instructions that you gave 
previous or before these words were spoken, if it's a situation that they can't deal with themselves, so shall you do it in Jesus' name. You can come get your keys. should tell the Lord thank you when you pick them up. Come up on this stage for a second. Yeah, don't don't fail me though. You keep it right there. Glory. We thank God. We bless the Lord. Thank the Lord for being here. God, open a door for that young man. I don't know who you are, but I'm praying that the Lord move on your behalf. Young guy in the black, in the black. I pray that the Lord move on your behalf this week. You hear me? You keep your head up. Keep your head up. What's your name? Say it again. What did he say it was? Kareem. All right, everybody in this church, this is what you're going to do. On Tuesday, on Thursday, you're going to pray, and you're going to pray for Kareem. You're going to, who's going to do that for me? Even if you do it for 10 minutes, add nothing to it. Just say, God, move for him. Will you, will you not forget? Will you not forget? Say, God, move for him. God, move for him, move for his child. God, move for him, move for his child. Y'all going to do that? When I see you again, you'll tell me the effects of prayer. I can promise you that. Prayer works, people of God. We ask our trustees to come up. Prayer works. It works. It works.